Are you ready for this? I'm Jackie, co-founder of Plant Chicks. And you guys may recognize Dr. Madeline Hardacre. She's been on a couple different lives with us because she is a board certified physician in, in OBGYN. I can't even say obstetrician and gyne you got it. gynecology. <laughs> gynecology. <laughs> gosh wow this is not starting off good but i promise it's going to get so much better and she's also board certified in lifestyle medicine but guys that is so not the reason i wanted to bring her on today because one of the reasons or the reason i wanted to bring her here is she just did an incredible feat she ran an ultra marathon is it now two weeks ago uh, it's been like 10 days. Well, yeah, 10, 11 days. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Two weeks on Saturday. And <laughs> an ultra, for those of you who don't know, is 50 miles, five zero. And she did it in one, like one day. <laughs> Honestly, this is something <laughs> I can't imagine ever doing or even wanting to do. But the, what I really wanted to talk to her about is like the mental strength it takes to do this. But before we get there, we are going to do a little bit like we're going to build up to that and we'll ask questions. And if you guys have any questions based on what she's saying, go ahead and type them in the chat and we'll do our best to get to them. So, Dr. Madeline, first of all, thank you so much. Thank for you. This is so fun. Oh, it's I always fun to talk to you. <laughs> I know. And I love speaking with you. You're so amazing and you just have this bright light about you. But OK, so you just. Uh, finished your first mm -hmm. of who knows how many ultra marathons mm -hmm. <laughs> but when we were talking about doing this live you said it actually took you nine years to realize this dream can you yes. tell us about your journey and how you got to this ultra oh absolutely so i i mean first of all since um you know over the past 20 years really like since the start of my career i have used distance running kind of as my form of mental health care. So I found it early on like that, you know, being outside running was just a beautiful way to, to manage my stress that I had in my career and raising a family and all of these things. So, so anyway, I long, um, long ago started distance running and ran, um, many marathons and, um, during that process, like I really enjoyed the marathon distance, but I always like in the back of my head, like really knew that I could go further. So like, I felt like I was like, I felt like I had successfully like challenged and hit the, um, my limits as far as how fast I could go. But I didn't feel like I had ever reached the limits of how far I could go. So, so like I had that in my mind of like, you know, like I'm going to go, go more than 26.2 miles. Um, and so, yeah, it was about nine years ago, <laughs> I signed up for a 50 K. So a 50 K is 31 miles, typically trail run. Um, I was living in Alabama at the time and there was, um, a 50 K in Huntsville, Alabama called mountain mist. And, so I signed up for that and I started training for it and ultimately ended up with, if you can imagine this, my orthopedic surgeon um, had never seen this before, but I ended up with bilateral mid femoral stress fractures. So both of my femurs had stress fractures as I increase, like, so that happened, like once I increased my mileage above and beyond what I was running to train for a marathon. And so, so, so obviously like I didn't run that 50 K and that actually, interestingly enough, that experience is what led me to a plant-based diet. So, <laughs> so that's kind of a side note, but anyway, so yeah, about that too. over the years, then I struggled with this like interest in doing something more than 26.2 miles, but then having these beliefs that my body couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Like because of those stress fractures, I just kind of created this, this thing in my mind of, you know, well, I tried it once and it didn't work. So I must not be 
cut out to do that, you know, and um, I really kept that belief for a long time. Like I, like I would continue to run marathons, but I just, anytime I thought of something longer, I just immediately went back to that experience. Um, and you know what changed it? I was, cause I think you, you trained with well coaches also, right? Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. So you know how in, in the, so, so both Jackie and I are certified, certified with, um, with well coaches as, as uh, health and wellness coaches. So we, um, I don't know if you remember this, but in that training, we spent time creating the wellness vision. Yes. And which like literally was life-changing for me to spend that time, like really thinking about what I wanted in my life. And so I developed this wellness vision around not regretting things and not fearing failure. And as I designed that wellness vision, like the thing that was in my head over and over again was like, why am I not trying to run that race again? Like, and so anyway, that then just kind of snowballed and, and created what I just did. That is really powerful. So what I'm hearing you say also in this story is you had this incredible dream, like you wanted to run further than a marathon, which I mean, literally I bow down to you and I'm not saying that to like give you a big head, but I've run, I think I only ran one marathon and I actually did quite well in it, but I'm like, I never want to do that again. <laughs> so long. So I, I just really, really, I think it's incredible people who push their boundaries mm -hmm. and you have this incredible dream. You want to run further, but then you have this doubt because you have these stress fra bilateral mm -hmm. stress fractures, not just on one side, you got it on both <laughs> legs. That's scary. So you've got these stress fractures. So you have these doubts mm -hmm. and you're giving yourself these self-limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. But then I also love that you pointed out, like when you started working with a coach, because when we do, when we did that coaching certification, mm -hmm. you do work with like you're basically coached and you're coaching yes. people as you're going through the process. Mm -hmm. And I love how you created your wellness vision and you created something that really resonated with you and you started working towards that, which mm -hmm. this speaks to the power of coaching. This is a whole nother topic that we'll get to at another yeah. time. But so, so like when I think back to like, where did the switch flip where I was like, oh no, I, I can do this. It was it was that time where I was, you know, doing the practice coaching with my, you know, we were paired up with a partner and my partner was actually, she's an OBGYN in Perth, Australia. So, you know, so she was, you know, she was coaching me on this topic and I'm like, oh. anyway, do it. You can do big things. You can do hard things. Listen right. to the ladies. You can, I'm not just speaking to Dr. Madeline. I'm speaking to you that are watching this watching too. Okay. One other thing that you talked about in your journey to getting here was when you had the bilateral stress fracture, you started doing more research and that's where you found the benefits of a whole food plant-based diet. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, um, I honestly think it was the day I left the orthopedic surgeon's office. Cause I was really like, I was really frustrated and, and you know, I, just when you have a big goal and then all of a sudden you're told that you shouldn't be weight bearing for 16 weeks. And oh. like, you know, I mean, it was like the restrictions that were put on me were crazy. Um, and <laughs> so I went to like, we had like a Borders or a Barnes and Noble bookstore nearby. Like, and I like just out of desperation, like I've got to take control of this situation somehow. Like, and so my nutrition was the thing that came to mind because there had been this like mention of like, oh, well, maybe we need to check your bone density. And, you know, and so I was like, well, I don't want to check my bone density, but I will change my diet to improve my bone density. <laughs> like, and so I went in the book I left with was the China study. Like I knew nothing about a whole food plant-based diet and that's the book that I left Barnes and Noble with. And I think it's chapter 10, like it changed my life. I think it's like bone and 
kidney disease or something. It's like, it's like, wow. it's like some kind of funny mix of topics, but, but anyway, it talked about, like, I immediately went to like osteoporosis and, you know, osteopenia and like, wh like, what do I need to do? And it started talking about, you know, eliminating dairy and, and, you know, it just went into all the benefits for bone health through a whole food plant-based diet. And that then like spurred, you know, I mean, I read like everything under the sun that was available at that point. Um, and there's so much more now available, but um, that really, you know, and I lived in Alabama at the time, they really did, it was, it was hard <laughs> to have a plant-based diet there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, and I've been to Alabama many times, so I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear. <laughs> so ladies that are watching, I want you guys to think, so Madeline did this incredible feat. She's, she ran very far, right? 50 miles. She, and before that, she even ran a marathon. Maybe some of you don't want to run a marathon. Maybe you don't have that desire, but I want you to listen, really listen to what Dr. Madeline is sharing. And I want you to apply these principles into something that you've got this big, huge dream. So you, you want to accomplish X, Y, or Z. I want you to listen to what Dr. Madeline is saying and things that she's doing. Like she goes to the doctor, she goes to her orthopedic surgeon. She's got bilateral uh, femoral fractures, femur fractures, and she's told like she, the way she gets rid of stress, the way she feels better is through running. And now she's been told you can't, you're non-weight bearing for 16 weeks. So everything you do for stress reduction is out the window. And instead of letting this defeat her and set her back and she gorgeous, she, instead of reacting in a negative way and granted, like you might've had some like really hard moments in this oh. time. Yeah, I, I did, but I think it was like, I knew if I did something that made me feel like I was in control of the situation, yeah. I would feel better. <laughs> yes. And you thought outside the box. Mm -hmm. So that is really, really powerful. And what did you do for those 16 weeks that you were supposed to be non-wavering? Did you, or are you like the typical doctor and you're a horrible patient? <laughs> You know what? Well, first of all, I was like, okay, but so how do I non weight bear on both legs? Yeah. And he looked at me and he's like, you know, <laughs> he, so, so his answer was crutches. Crutches like lasted like 30 minutes, like in my <laughs> life. So, so that was not an option. Um, and so I just, you know, walked, I stopped doing anything with any kind of impact at all. Um, I was very fortunate in that we had a pool in our backyard and I started water running and I, I started water running with the goal of maintaining my fitness so that, cause my 16 weeks was over right before the planned race. Okay. Okay. So I started water running with the thought of, well, I'm just going to see what I can do in the pool. <laughs> and so I, now I did not maintain my fitness to the point where I felt like I could run a 50 K. Okay. But when I was released to run again, I did run 17 miles of that race by just simply training in the pool. Um, and so, yeah, I would spend sometimes like, you know, instead of doing a long run, I would do four hours running in the pool. <laughs> Wow, that is really, really powerful. And that's a pivot, you guys. Pivot. Like, if something throws you off course, and this is something that Mercy and I, and we've talked to you about this too, Madeline, with respect to business, things don't always go as planned. And we have to do that hashtag plant chicks pivot mm -hmm. constantly. And that's something that you're describing eloquently. Mm -hmm. And you figured out how you could maintain, like, your goal was to maintain your level mm -hmm. of your cardiovascular mm -hmm. level so right. that you could run 31 miles. Mm -hmm. You didn't necessarily get to the 31 miles, but you did 17 miles right, right after right. you were released. I just, and really okay. it was a matter of just deciding that, yeah, it was probably kind of ridiculous to, to run, you know, a 50 K, um, <laughs> at that point, but 
<laughs> but I knew I wanted to be out there on the course and I, you know, I had registered. And so I just, I kind of went into it just having a plan of knowing that I wasn't going to finish the race, but that I was going to go out there and have fun and see what I could do. So. And what I hear you say, Dr. Madeline, is that attitude you had, you you were, you were going to attempt to run whatever yeah. you could and you were happy with however far you got, you didn't put any boundaries and that's beautiful. Oh, exactly. Exactly. No, that's good. All right. So tell us a little bit about the training. Like what did your training mm -hmm. look like for your ultra marathon and how long did you take to do this training? Um, you know, I started the process, um, like a year ago. So it was really a year of very kind of intentional training with this in mind. I didn't know, like a, a year ago, I didn't know exactly what race I was going to do. I had a, an idea as to the distance I was planning and the time of year, but I, I didn't really kind of pin it down until fall, but I started a year ago increasing my base mileage, um, kind of slowly increasing it, knowing that, um, you know, I wanted to let, to maintain a higher base mileage for a while mm -hmm. and then build on that. And so that all started a year ago. I do remember when you registered for the, <laughs> Did. I, I remember that vividly. So that's kind of cool. So what did your, what was your base mileage yep. starting out? And then what was your base mileage? Like before you started to taper right before the, yeah. so, so, you know, so I, so I hit, um, you know, for a while I maintained about 30 miles a week, um, and then kind of bumped it up to 40 and did that for a while. And I knew that ultimately I wanted to hit about a 70 mile week. Wow. And um, during that process though, here's another pivot moment because I found myself setting mileage goals for the week and I found myself getting frustrated um, and feeling like I wasn't accomplishing my goals because I would like say some days I would pick a trail to run that was a more challenging technical trail, maybe with a really steep climb. And I would hit like, you know, the minutes of what that mileage would equate to, but I wouldn't hit the actual mileage because I was going much slower because of the, you know, technical nature of the trail. And so I would really like beat myself up and the same would happen with like some days I'd be, I would feel like maybe less impact would be better. And so I wanted to get on like my Peloton for like a long ride instead of a run. But then that didn't, like, I had a hard time equating that then to mileage running, even though I knew it was good training. So ultimately I I shifted my focus instead of focusing on the number of miles per week, I, I, um, I set a minutes per week goal. And so I bumped the number of minutes. And so I counted anything, like any time on foot out on the trail and any time on the bike, I counted. So that's what led you to realize that pivot. You know, I think because I just started looking at like, okay, I'm doing like, I knew I was doing well in my training. It's just if I looked at it from a standpoint of meeting the mileage goal, I wasn't meeting it. And I was like, well, why am I then beating myself up and feeling like a failure when I really like knew I was doing well? Right. So, <laughs> so when I go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. So I just was like, so I spent some time just thinking about like, okay, how can I redefine my goal each week so that I can, um, I can be successful. And so by redefining it to minutes, then it was, it was perfect. And that is beautiful. So it's like that little minute mindset change that you had that really made a world of difference. You weren't beating yourself up. You were meeting your goals. It gives you a boost of confidence. And then that mm -hmm. encourages you mm -hmm. to keep going. And this is something like we talk about all the time. We do our goal call Mondays every Monday here in the tribe. And this is a perfect example 
of how you could pivot and alter, adjust mm -hmm. that goal because mm -hmm. goals are like many experiments and you choose to right. see what works. And I love how you experimented with the mindset, just the mindset around the training. Right, right. Because ultimately I was doing the exact same training. Yep. Like, but it was a matter of how I worded my goal. And that was like, it was seriously a game changer when I did that because I like, you know, I had a few weeks where I didn't meet my mileage goal. And then what happens is you start making that mean something you know, you're like, oh, well, then maybe I'm not cut out for this. Like, maybe I, you know, maybe I'm right. Like, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I, you know, and you start putting all this doubt in your head because you're not meeting the goal. When I really knew inside that I was doing the training, like, I was, right, right. you know, so it's like, okay, well, how can I, how can I shift literally just how I worded the goal? <laughs> like, and Dr. Madeline, when you were going through all of this, like how did it come to you that you needed to adjust your mindset and your thinking? Were you working with a coach? Were you talking to some of your friends in this space, your son who you're uh -huh. training, you're doing this race with? Mm -hmm. Did you listen, read any books or listening mm -hmm. to any podcasts, like personal development kind of things? Mm -hmm. What led you to realize that you needed you know to get here? Well, I... I um, did some of my training with a good friend of mine who has done a number of ultra marathons. And I knew like she was always very focused on just the amount of time we were out. You know, she would like, we would go out on a long trail run and, and she paid zero attention to mileage or our pace. And it was only like how many minutes we were out. Um, you know, moving our feet forward. <laughs> so, you know, and that was it. And so one day I was on a run and I, I was just thinking about the fact that we had been using that philosophy for our long runs. And then I'm like, you know what, why can't I just apply that across the board yes. and not worry about. So I, so I just, I was able to take like my typical pace per mile look at my mileage goal and then, you know, translate that to a goal in minutes and it was beautiful perfect. and I love that and what I'm hearing too is like you were working with someone who'd done this before and you can apply this to business you can apply this to whatever totally. goal you're working on just as long as someone is maybe a couple steps ahead of you or they've experienced mm -hmm. something that you've been through they can give you so much guidance and help you kind of rethink the way you're mm -hmm. looking at something so how long was one of your longest long runs and how long did you plan like how long were you thinking that you were going to be how long did you what is the word i'm looking for how long did you like think that you would it would take you to run the ultra um <laughs> that's got there's kind of a funny answer to that question um i so my longest training runs were in the seven to eight hour range um <laughs> And I have Wait a minute. Wait, just pause there for a second. Let's just like give her a shout out. <laughs> Great hours running for like a training run. Okay. Wow. Just yeah. wow. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> so um so those were I I did two that were in that range before the race. And then um so a couple weeks before the race. Uh, now, and let me add one thing about the, the particular race I signed up for was 50 miles and it had an elevation gain. So it was up in the mountains um, outside of Bishop, California. It had an elevation gain of 8,900 feet. Oh, so, gosh. So, the, so the race started and you climbed for um, the first 23 miles. <laughs> So oh, three miles. Yeah, yeah, it was uphill. Um, so, so anyway, I mean, there was a, like a little, like right at the beginning, there was like a little, like, like, kind of rolling flattish area. But then, yeah, then then it was just climbing. Um, so there was a big elevation gain, you know, during this race too, um, which I had trained. It, 
with elevation. I live in the mountains, um, but yet I had never done that amount of gain in a day. So I really didn't know how to factor that into what pace to anticipate. But anyway, so I, um, my friend Nadia that I train with, um, she had asked me like two weeks before the race, she's like, you know, well, what are you thinking for a finish time for, um, for this race? And I had calculated out like 12 hours. Wow. And anyway, it was kind of funny because she started laughing and she's like, she's like, <laughs> she's like, I'm not like saying I'm doubting you, but she's like, I think you need to. <laughs> She's like, I think you need to, because for some reason, like in my mind, like this is how I was like handling the concept, like running 50 miles sounded a little overwhelming, but running for 12 hours felt doable. So I was like, okay, like I can get out, I can go out and keep moving forward for 12 hours. Like I know I can do that. So that was kind of what kept going through my brain is I can move forward for 12 hours. And anyway, so when I said 12 hours, she, you know, she found it very comical. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to, to, to rethink this. So I looked at like previous race results for this race to get an idea as to like what someone my age might run this race. And, and I saw that there were years where 12 hours was the winning time for a woman. Whoa. Like, <laughs> like, so... Wow. So, so all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah, I'm not winning this race. <laughs> you know, wow. so, um, so I then kind of shifted my, my thought on that and, and knew it would take me longer than 12 hours. So what did you mentally prepare for? So I, so I, I, I still kind of because I had been thinking about the 12 hour thing for so long, I was like, well, I know very confidently I can move for 12 hours because I have been telling myself that for, you know, months now. And so then I'll just move for 12 hours and then finish the race. Like, <laughs> there you go. You know, I, so I was like, whatever it takes after that, I'll, you know, because surely 12 hours into it, I will be somewhat close. And so, <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, I was hoping when I went out there that I would be done before it got dark out in the evening. Um, you know, I had a headlamp, I, I had a map of the course, but you know, wow. being out on a mountain trail after dark, like really didn't, didn't appeal to me. Um, and so, you know, I kind of had it as a goal to be um, done before it got dark, <laughs> which I was. Wow, okay. So what time did it start? So it started at 5 a.m. Was it, so it was dark when so it started? It was dark. Mm -hmm. it was dark. Okay. We had, he, we had head, headlamps when we started and then, um, and then I, um, it took me 14 hours. And, oh, that's actually really good. So you guys, if you haven't looked at Dr. Madeline's Instagram, she has pictures and you have to go back and look at her feed and give her a follow at Women's <laughs> Health Elevated on Instagram because she has yeah. some really amazing pictures. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have run a marathon for sure. I don't think I've done more than two marathons. Mm -hmm. And I remember like in the training I would run, but then a week or two weeks prior, we would start mm -hmm. tapering down mm -hmm. and nutrition would change a little bit too. And mm -hmm. also like as a fitness competitor, like Marcia trains mm -hmm. fitness competitor, she trained me to the stage mm -hmm. and literally a couple weeks out, Ever, really it was a month out but everything changed nutrition and my workouts mm -hmm. can you describe like how you tapered and what those like new uh nutrition and fitness mm -hmm. how that changed a little bit for you totally yeah you know and in fact my nutrition um I really could take back to January like starting in January I really you know I mean I have a good healthy diet but I like really reined it in starting in January. So, um, for a few reasons, like I knew from an inflammatory standpoint, like that, I, like my body was going to feel the best and recover the best for those, like, because at that point I was starting to put in more and more miles and I wanted just to feel like just optimal as far as my nutrition goes. Um, and then I also know just from, um, uh, weight standpoint, like where I feel most comfortable running. And, um, and so, you know, those two things kind of make, 
um, uh, made me like really focus in and and hone in on like all the little details of, of my nutrition and like no refined sugars, like no alcohol, no, like really cleaning up like all the, all those little things that sneak in occasionally, just, <laughs> just got rid of them. Um, and so that really helped. And it just, it also helps your mind. Cause you just know like, okay, like I'm, I really optimized everything. Um, so I did that. And then, uh, yeah, a few weeks before the race, then I started tapering my mileage. So that started about three weeks before the race. And I really cut back. Um, another friend of mine who is a big, um, like really amazing distance runner, um, she described it. She was like, you want to feel like on the start line, you want to feel like a caged tiger. And she because like that taper is hard when you're used to like yeah. putting in all these miles. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're doing nothing and you feel like your fitness is just like seeping away. <laughs> like, like you're going to lose it all and you're trying to hold on to it. But, um, but anyway, she was like, you want to feel like a caged tiger at the start line. Like you have so much energy and you're just ready to go for it. And so, um, anyway, so I really kind of kept picture like kept that image in my mind of like okay like I know this taper is like sucks but you know that's the feeling that you want to have when you start the race and so that's brilliant I love that you had like a little visual in your head like oh, totally. leading up to it and then like in the race you're like yes I have the tiger like I'm feeling right, right. Exactly, exactly and you also probably knew at the beginning you're not going to go like balls out you're going to like be careful yeah. too not to overexert initially yeah. Yeah. Although I did, like, if I look back at like my miles, it's like mile, I don't know, two and three, like were my like fastest miles by far. Cause I think like you've got that adrenaline in you and you like are warmed up and you're, like, and then all of a sudden you're like, Ooh, I got to slow down. Like I can't do this. Wow. That's incredible. And I'm also realizing that you were doing a lot of this training during the pandemic, which mm -hmm. that had to have helped like release some stress mm -hmm. during like a very stressful time. I mean, it gave me like something to like really focus on and yeah, like take my mind off of all the chaos that was going on. And that is actually another really good nugget. If you got like, life is lifey, life happens and hopefully we won't ever have to live through a pandemic again and hopefully no one's kids will either or grandkids. Mm -hmm. But literally when life is lifey and it's kind of crazy, if you can set a goal for yourself, like a positive goal, mm -hmm. and you can kind of keep looking towards that and working towards that and like mm -hmm. slowly start pecking away, because as you heard, Dr. Madeline didn't just like run, go out and run 50 miles. It took a year to get to this race. And literally it took nine years to get her, mm -hmm. to get everything to fall into place. Right. So it takes time. It's like one step at a time, one step at a time. And then hopefully in six months, a year, nine years, whatever your time is, you can also get to that place. But having that really good, incredible, positive goal mm -hmm. can help keep, like it can have, bring some kind of bright light around you when life is lifey. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think just when you have that kind of bigger, broader vision of what you want, like the kind of the key components of what you want in your life and what's important to you, you know, then it gives you, yeah, when things are stressful, when, you know, when pandemics hit, whatever, like it, it keeps you, um, you know, focused and it, it gives you some intention. Like, you know, there's yes. just all those decisions you're making all day long. And if you don't have that big picture in mind, it really can kind of turn into that, like, you know, proverbial hamster wheel where you're just kind of going, 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 but you're not going anywhere. Right. No. And that's a really good point, which also is a great segue into let's talk about the race. Like you're running the mm -hmm. race, you start off, you're warming up miles two and three. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like whoa, whoa, whoa. I got to slow down. But like talk us through the race and share some like amazing highs. And also mm -hmm. like, when things started getting tough, how did you mm -hmm. keep going? Like talk us, mm -hmm. tell us about this. Yeah. You know what the, I mean, the first point where I, I had a little mental struggle, um, 
it, and it'll surprise you how early it was in the race, but I, there's a reason why it happened. Um, but uh, so there was um, the 100K in the 50 mile race that started. And then like an hour or maybe 30 minutes later, a 50K race started. So the 50K runners, you know, were running 31 miles and they started after us. So at about mile like eight and nine, all those 50K runners were passing me. So it was like all of a sudden I had like runner after runner after runner going past me. Like, and I knew it was the 50K runners, but it really kind of messed with my mind as far as the pace I was running. Because it was like, all of a sudden I was like, oh, well, maybe I should, like, maybe I should be going that pace. Like, you know, it's like you start questioning what you're doing. And I really had to, to spend some time, like, cause I did pick up my pace for a little bit just because like everybody's passing me, you know? And so then, then I, I found this kind of like mantra, if you will, of, my pace is perfect for my goal. My pace is perfect for my goal. And I kept saying that like over and over again. So I went back to my, my pace that I knew like would get, cause I was like, what, you know, I, I just had to go kind of through this mental process of like, what really is my goal with this? Like my goal is to finish. And if I go out you know, if I increase my pace at mile eight and I have 42 miles left, this is not going to go well, right. <laughs> you know, so really kind of reining in and identifying like, okay, what is the goal of today? And, um, and then getting just very, very focused on this pace is perfect for the goal that I have and, and leaving it at that and letting people go by me and not thinking anything of it. But so that was kind of the first like place where I, you know, I, I was mentally challenged. Um, and then it was just, you know, somebody had told me, well, a few people had told me this and my friend Nadia, who was very experienced, told me this. She said, you know what, you're going to have these ups and downs during the race and they will just continue. Like you'll have an up, you'll have a down, you'll have an up, you'll have a down. Like, and she's like, when you're in those moments of, of where it really feels difficult and you're mentally like, just like, you're so over it. She's like, just know that, you know, 30 seconds later, you might be in the best mood ever, like and feeling fantastic. And it was so true. So it's like, when you would get, and it really kind of is like life in general, you know, you have the good and you have the bad. And when you're having the bad, you just stay focused on, well, you know, that there's good out there that will come to you. Like, it's just, you know, taking those highs and lows. And, and I mean, it really was funny because it would be like, you'd have a moment where you're like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. This totally sucks. Like, like I never, ever doubted my ability to finish it once I was out there. Like I knew that barring some physical injury where I simply could not move forward, like I was going to, I was going to finish it. But, um, you know, there'd just be times where I'd be like, wow, okay, I've got, I've got four hours left. Fantastic. I only have four hours left. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I have four hours left. Like, <laughs> it's like, I would look at four hours in the most beautiful, positive light. And then all of a sudden I would like, be like, how on earth am I going to do this for four more hours? <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Yeah. So you said so many amazing things. First of all, <laughs> focusing on your goal. First of all, knowing what your goal is. And you had a goal. You set out, you knew you were going to run. You knew you could finish this, this 50 mile run, you knew you would do this 50 mile race mm -hmm. and you knew you could, you just knew like that was a goal. You were going to accomplish that mm -hmm. goal. And that brought you back to being able to speed up, slow down, do whatever you needed to do mm -hmm. in order to finish. I also love that you had a mantra that you came up with a mantra. <laughs> people talk about mantras all the time, like a meditation. And sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, that's so woo woo, whatever. Mm -hmm. But mantras, they can really, really help you. And you oh, I mean, it say like, I mean, it, it was something that I, you know, like I said, I identified this mantra at like mile eight and 
I kept returning to it every time like I needed like to focus my mind on something like you know yeah. I would just go back to that and, and it worked which is exactly what we do in meditation too so like when you meditate you're supposed to quiet your mind and then mm -hmm. this is when my mind kind of starts to go rampant but a lot of times people meditate with a mantra and you're describing this perfectly mm -hmm. like you were thinking oh my god four hours but mm -hmm. then you would use this mantra and it would calm your mind down and it would also redirect your mind like our brains it's mm -hmm. full of neural pathways and you would redirect those that thought process to the healthy mm -hmm. positive neural pathway versus that self-defeating neural pathway and, that's beautiful. Well, and, and it's um you know like i i mean this happened many times on training runs and then during this race also and it really just happens in life in general but what yeah. like what you focus on just expands in your mind like and so if you you know if you take some really like negative feeling and then your focus or or even like the physical pain that like i felt if i let myself focus on it then it just got stronger and stronger and stronger versus if i shifted to my mantra or i shifted to like focusing on some part of my body that felt fantastic like mm. then all of a sudden that's the direction my like everything was going so it was like so like it's so crazy how if you really kind of intentionally focus your mind on something you want to expand it does yes and one of the things that we talk about and i've done meditations on this too and like in recovery when things are amazing enjoy it while it lasts enjoy it while it lasts mm -hmm. but then when things are not going well mm -hmm. one i love the idea of going to a mantra or mm -hmm. focusing your attention on something mm -hmm. positive mm -hmm. but also realize that this too shall pass like that mm -hmm. negative that heavy feeling is not going to last mm -hmm. but i also i love shifting the thoughts to mm -hmm. something positive mm -hmm. something that something good that's happening in your life. And again, ladies, okay. think about what you're going through personally right now and implement these tools that Dr. Madeline has used that she's describing and talking about now. And you can implement these things into your life, into the goals that you want to reach to keep mm -hmm. you focused. So one of the things that I remember from after the race is you won worse blisters. <laughs> And another thing also, I remember you were in the race and your son who ran with you, he did the, the 50 miles. Yes, he did the 50 miles too. He, he did not run with me. Um, he, he actually right. finished sixth overall. So he, he, finished, he finished like a full, like five and a half hours or something before me. <laughs> Two things that you described, like you were, I don't remember where it was. It was maybe when you had four hours left or something like that. And he was coming back and you were still out and yeah. it was nice like it was cool seeing him uh -huh. but was uh -huh. there also some like oh my god like there was that like amazing goodness but then you're like oh oh no <laughs> this is like a lot yeah, more i think i was at like mile 20 24 25 and he was at i think mile like coming on mile 34 wow. um, and we passed each other on the trail Jackie, I still like, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it because like, I just like, I saw him and my, like the tears just like, ah, <laughs> anyway, we like came up, we gave each other a big hug. We took a quick selfie and then we went on our way. So. Wow. And he still got six after taking that little break to say oh, hi. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> really tell them congratulations. Oh, congratulations to both of you guys. And that was another question. So did you listen to music or anything on the race? You know what? I, I had it with me. I had my headphones with me because um, I do typically on, on long training runs, I listen to music. I listen to Audible. I listen to podcasts. I, you know, I, I listen to all kinds of things. Um, for some reason, like I tried multiple times to turn it on and it was not what I needed. Like I, like it almost caused more anxiety or something like i needed just my brain like i didn't want anything else like there and so yeah i like i like three or four different times i 
I would turn everything on and, and then I, sometimes I like would flip through a few songs thinking, okay, well maybe Dolly Parton will liven me up. Like, I mean, I mean, she's, she's always going to like make me the happy. Peloton coming out. You what? <laughs> this is the Peloton coming out. Cause I know yeah. like all these Dolly Parton Peloton rides. No. So literally when you just said the, the music, the audible, like all of that, I'm literally going to cry like for what you just said, because all you need is you. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you said. All you needed was right here within you. Mm -hmm. Ladies, listen, you are perfect exactly the way you are. You've got everything you need right here in you. And that is beautiful, Madeline. Like I literally, I'm like tearing up hearing you say that because yeah. it's, it's so true. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it was just all that I wanted. It's funny also that you you say that because well, and it kind of goes back to our our um, earlier conversation about just like what you focus on expands. But when I was having like physical pain, you know, on long training runs, like if I if something's bothering me, I have pain somewhere, then I always like like I said, I really focus on, okay, well, what are all the body parts that feel good? You know, and I, and I'll do like this little rundown of all the things feeling good. And so it's funny because about mile 43 or 44 in the race, I can, I can picture exactly where I was on the trail. I was, I was going through that process and I couldn't come up with like a single body part that was feeling good for me to focus on because I was like, you know, until I came up with, I was like, oh my gosh, my mind feels good. My mind feels good. And I was so excited that I figured out <laughs> that wow. like my mind is good. My mind is good. And I, so I just kind of focused on like, well, you know what, everything else hurts, but my mind is good. So. <laughs> wow. And you had seven miles left to go, which is really like, that's really powerful. And I love your whole positive attitude and outlook. And this is something that I'm going to focus on like today. And I hope you guys do too. Like what is something positive? Cause there's just, I've got so much going on right now, but I can also redirect my thinking to all the good that is also happening in my life. And I'm going to refocus on that and take action. Like you were taking action and redirecting your thoughts to your mind and still putting one foot in front of the other. Right. When did you start noticing the blisters on your feet? <laughs> um, yeah, those, well, so the thing about this course, like the trail that we were on, it was mainly sand. So if you can imagine you live by the beach, like running on sand. <laughs> anyway, oh my so gosh. my shoes were filled <gasps> with sand and my socks and my like, and so it was like in those last, you know, eight or nine miles, like the bliss, like I knew that I had like significant blisters, like in the sand in my shoes just felt like, I mean, it felt like somebody was with sandpaper, just like every step, like rubbing those things. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that was kind of toward the end, like the thing that bothered me most, but yet I also kept thinking, okay, they're just blisters. Like, like it's, it's not that big of a deal. And so, and finally I, um, with three miles left, there was an aid station where I stopped and I actually sat down. I had to have somebody help me take my shoes off because my hands were so swollen. My fingers were like little sausages. <laughs> like, and so I couldn't untie my shoes, but anyway, I took my shoes off. I didn't take my socks off. I didn't want to see them. Um, but I emptied all the sand out of my shoes and which made such a difference. I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? But anyway, um, so those last three miles, at least the sand was out. Oh, I honestly cannot <laughs> imagine like that is where it takes grit and mental toughness. And I guess that's when you're really just keep redirecting, redirecting your yeah. thoughts yeah. to what is feeling good. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, that's what it was. I mean, at, there at the end that that's all it was. It was just like, keep like going back to, you know, I, I've got this. And like, and it really was one of those things where it's like the closer you get, like, you're like, I'm doing it. I'm not, you know, and so you see the end in sight. You're like, yeah, I got this. I got this. Yeah. I got this. So I just have to make one comparison real fast and then we'll start um, 
wrapping up. So for any of you guys watching or listening to this on replay later, there is this insane guy. His name is David Goggins. He's been on literally every podcast. Maybe even he has his own podcast. He wrote his own book. He does insane acts. Like he is probably one of the mental toughest people on earth. And there's different neuro neurologist or neuroscientist yeah like the people. neuroscientist I yeah. yeah like Andrew Huberman I think studies yes. him yeah <laughs> yes, we call Andrew Huber, Huberman Dr. Hot because he is one attractive doctor but anyway he actually said like he likes to study David Goggins just because the way he thinks is like no one else mm -hmm. has this mental toughness but literally Madeline like what you've done you are like my female version of david goggins oh my like, gosh I can't. <laughs> and i mean that i'm not just saying that to make you feel so good like, literally what you did it's just mind-blowing to me but you're also sharing so many amazing tips and pieces of information that we can mm -hmm. implement in our everyday life and it also you're also showing like you can aim higher than what you were thinking and stop putting these self-limiting beliefs mm -hmm. around you in whatever the scenario mm -hmm. is so that's really really powerful so what nuggets of advice on dreaming doubting mm -hmm. and being in discomfort do you have for the tribe and for everyone watching now and maybe watching on replay yeah you know what i think um the i mean first of all when you start thinking about just that big picture, that big vision, the big dream of what you want. And you start noticing all of the things, the thoughts that come in to your mind that, um, that bring up all the doubt and everything. I really think it's like a, a powerful tool to like write down those beliefs and then start really like questioning them like <laughs> like looking at like what are the facts i mean because i could use like you know i used for years the fact that i had had two stress fractures as a reason why i couldn't do this but okay yes two stress fractures was the fact but I made that fact mean so much more than it needed to mean. Like, and so take those things in your life where you like, you have decided that you can't do something because of X, Y, or Z and really shake things up, like really question those beliefs. So I think that's, you know, and you can't do that until you really start looking at what you want, like, and identifying what you want in life, and then what is holding you back, and then, then you start, um, you know, uh, identifying those things. And then the other thing, just when it comes to doubt, I think recognizing that this is normal, like, when you are doubting yourself, like, you think of, say, you want to do, like, like I, I have somebody I'm working with right now who wants to do a century, uh, uh, what are they called, Centurion or a, like a hundred miles on the bike. I'm not a cyclist, so <laughs> I don't know exactly what it's called. A century ride, I think. I think um, it's a century ride. Okay, yeah, so she wants to do a century ride. So, um, ta you know, going through the thought that, that, um, that doubt is, normal like you say you want to do something and then all of a sudden you have that primitive brain that's going to try to protect you like it's designed to keep you safe keep you comfortable keep you from expending like a lot of energy like it's going to create that doubt and it doesn't mean that it's a bad idea like you have to recognize that that is just your normal human brain doing doing that like doing what it's designed to do but i feel like people make it mean so much more like oh yeah like that's a bad idea i can't do it no that's super powerful and it's so true our reptilian brain wants to keep us safe mm -hmm. and when we're safe we're not growing we're not expanding right. so right. definitely push those boundaries a little bit and lean into like lean into getting right. a little bit uncomfortable in a safe right. way Obviously. Right, but like if you start feeling that doubt and that discomfort, I mean, this is what I do. 
I view it as a good sign that I'm about ready to grow, like, and I'm about ready to do, like, <laughs> you know? So yeah, like you said, lean into it and have some curiosity about it, but don't like hold yourself back. Like, go, like move into it and continue to explore it and understand that like that is normal. I love it. And one other thing that you said is, really identify what it is that you want in your life. And I've said this so many times to so many people, and then they're like, I don't know what I want. Right. And then my friend is, this is when it's a, an appropriate time to work with a coach around mm -hmm. whatever area it is. And before I ask you a question, I want to just say like coaching, if you look at professional athletes, if you look at executives, like people that run big, huge companies, they have multiple coaches. They have a nutrition coach, a fitness coach, a lifestyle. Like there's so many different kinds of coaches and these coaches help people grow and expand and lean into that discomfort and start chipping away at those doubts because that is the doubts. I love how you said it. It's just like your reptilian brain trying to keep you safe. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't want you to grow. So mm -hmm. this is a time that I really do recommend working with a coach. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, you run a couple, you are a coach, you are mm -hmm. a physician, and you also run some group coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. One of them is Mastering the Middle Years. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the coaching services and the professional services that you offer? Because you're amazing. And I like, I can't recommend you enough. You, oh, thank you. <laughs> and you've had some really incredible experiences in your coaching programs and women who are creating amazing new realities for themselves. So share a little bit about what your coaching services are, what your professional services are and how they can find you. Yeah, I do. Um, so women's health elevated is the name of my practice. And, um, um, that's my website, my Instagram, my Facebook, um, and everything. And then, so I do one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. Um, it's very health and well-being focused. I definitely uh, incorporate all the principles of lifestyle medicine um, into that. And then the thing that I'm most excited about, and I started this in January, is a program called Mastering the Middle Years. And it's a small group coaching that is really designed around what we just talked about of really defining that vision for your midlife um, because i think you know when women are younger the chapters are a little more clear and defined like it's like okay we're you know working on x y and z in our career or we have you know this with our family or you know but then women kind of get to their midlife and, and many women kind of feel like they're in a, a rut and don't have those things that they're working on and, and, and those visions ahead of them. And so um, we really work on, on that, work on the self-limiting beliefs, work on, on, and then I have all of the lifestyle information in there too, but a lot of it is really focused on goal setting and habit change and, and looking at that big picture that we want for our lives. And so it's fun because I have like, that's where I have the woman that's training for the century ride. I have a woman that's training for a marathon. I have, um, you know, another woman working on a half marathon. I have a woman who went to graduate school, like we, you know, but really kind of sitting and taking the opportunity to talk through all the possibilities and everything in that small group setting. And um, anyway, it's a lot of fun. And then, then I just, I like literally just this week, I'm opening up just the Mastering the Middle Years course content um, with videos for those people who don't want just, who don't want to meet in a small group, who want to just do it on their own. Um, because tell I found that, that how do you, tell us more about that. Like how would someone find that? Yeah. So it's on my website. If you go to the mastering the middle years information, then that's one of the options. Um, and I created that simply because I had some people sign up for mastering the middle years, but they didn't want to come to the groups. They just wanted a recording of the group and they wanted to do the work on their own. So I, so I have, so there's a whole workbook with videos to go with each page of the workbook. So people can just sit and like, and do it all just 
on their own, but go through the same exercise of defining that vision and working on their goals and everything. So, so that's peep that's open now. People can get that. Yes, now. yes, yes, yes. Just this week. I haven't, I haven't actually, this is the first time I've like, ah. I've verbalized it. <laughs> but, <laughs> nice. No, so this is awesome. So people can take advantage and do mastering the middle years mm -hmm. at any time mm -hmm. and they can also join your small group coaching yeah. and i think your next yeah. small group coaching and mastering the middle years opens in october is that correct? yes 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 i have a i have a group that's running right now and then um i'm gonna take the rest of the summer off and then start a group in october so i'll probably open registration in september but i haven't set the exact date yet awesome but it's right. so well, it's so much fun it sounds amazing and i do want to do it at some point seriously mm -hmm. and then one last question do you want to do another ultra <laughs> i've already <laughs> signed up for one. <laughs> when is it you're so amazing so well so so i have two in mind so i i signed up for a 50k that's in august and then there is one here locally um almost in my backyard that is a 50 mile that's the end of September and they are waiting on some permits to actually open registration but that's on my calendar so that's the next place. that's actually soon it was sooner than what I was expecting to hear that's yeah. amazing the so day that I finished the race I was like like I didn't say I would never do this again but I was like I don't know when I would do this again like that was my thinking um but by the next morning, I was like, <laughs> so kind of like when women have babies, like they maybe have like <laughs> a painful delivery process, but then they have this incredible human and they're like, oh, I want more. So right, right, right. It's totally the same thing. You really kind of forget, like, I mean, you know, I can sit here and describe what happened just like I can describe, you know, I had natural childbirth with my, with my daughter. I could describe how that like feels, but you like, you lose the, the, um, negative emotion that's attached to it i guess i know that's so incredible i love it and i love and the, one last thing i want to say and then i want you to share any closing comments you have is um now i even just lost my train of thought i know i know what it is if you have a big hairy crazy audacious goal one of the things that we always recommend to plant chicks is sign up for a challenge like you want to go plant-based do our seven day starter kit like something mm -hmm. like that if you yeah. want to run, sign up for a 5K, a 10K, 50 miles. Yeah. So I love that you've already signed up for your next yeah. one. <laughs> you are seriously goals. Maybe I will eventually get back into some running. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be super long distance. <laughs> Maybe I used to like like half marathons oh, and yeah. 10, 15 Ks. That was kind of my yeah. jam. Half but, marathons uh, are a beautiful distance. They ours and it's not so painful mm -hmm. but i digress this is not about me so dr madeline what are any closing comments that you'd like to share you know what i think the thing that always just comes back to my mind it, to my mind is just really encouraging women to not be scared of like dreaming big and and you know it's just I don't know. I think we really have a tendency to kind of hold ourselves back from what we truly are capable of. And um, I just love it when I see people out there like coming up with big, like fun goals in their life. And it doesn't have to be running 50 miles. It can be, you know, starting a new career or it can be do it. Like, I mean, there's so many different things, but don't, don't succumb to the fear and the doubt, but really just move past that. And that's my main um, word of wisdom, I guess. I love it. Dream bigger. Perfect way to end this. Thank you so much for You're being here. You're so welcome. This was so much fun, Jackie. It was so awesome. Thank you, Madeline. Oh my gosh, you are so amazing. Thank you. Oh, that you. was so much fun.